hi everyone so to continue our work on robotics we move on to the next section which is lagrangian mechanics specifically for robotic manipulators and without waiting any longer let's get right into it now if you haven't done so already please give me a thumbs up and like this video and don't forget to subscribe i'm chums and welcome to that's engineering Alright, so the main goal in Lagrangian mechanics would be to calculate the torques or the forces acting on a joint or a robot. So up to now we've discussed two main types of joints. We've had revolute joints and prismatic joints. Right, so a revolute joint would rotate along some axis of rotation. Due to it being a rotational body, it would have a torque acting upon it. On the other hand, the prismatic joint would simply move linearly up or down and therefore would have a force acting on it. So what you have to know is that if you have a revolute joint, you would calculate a torque. But if you have a prismatic joint, you would find a force. Now, the torques and forces can be found using the Lagrangian. The Lagrangian simply denoted by the capital letter L is equal to the kinetic energy of the system minus the potential energy. So as a shorthand notation I will just use Ke for kinetic energy minus Pe for potential energy. Now, the terms for kinetic and potential energy would exist in terms of whatever variable is used in the equation. So, for example, you would have theta and theta dot, where theta would represent the position of the robot manipulator and theta dot would represent the velocity of the robot manipulator. So, these two terms would be used uh, to make up the equations for the kinetic and potential energy. So to find the kinetic energy, we will use the equation we've been using all along, which is half m v squared. So this v squared term will actually contain theta dot. And the potential energy would simply be mgh, where the height term would contain theta, which is the position. So once the Lagrangian has been calculated, we can then find the torques or the forces acting on the joints of the robot and to do that we can simply use this equation right so I've just used tau here to represent the torques but it can also be for forces you would start off by finding the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot which is the velocity and then finding the time derivative of that particular equation. You would then subtract the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to theta and finally subtract any external input torques and forces and that would be multiplied by theta. So the overall steps that you would follow when solving a problem involving Lagrangian mechanics would be first of all to analyze the robot system or the robot manipulator and from this you would be able to find the position vector of the joints or whatever parts you're looking at and that would actually be represented by theta you can then differentiate the position vector and by differentiating it the velocity vector can be found. Now the velocity vector would be represented by theta dot. We can then use the position and velocity vectors to find the kinetic energy which would be half m v squared where v is the velocity vector and the potential energy which is simply mgh, h including the position vector. We can then use the kinetic and potential energies 
to find our Lagrangian, which is kinetic energy minus the potential energy. And once we have found the Lagrangian, we can then find any torques or forces acting on the joints using the equation we discussed in the previous slide, which is this equation. And any external inputs. Right, so to make things clearer, let's go through a worked example. This is the robot under question that we will be looking at. So it has two prismatic joints, first joint being P1 and the second joint being P2. So P1, the link attached to joint P1, has a mass of m1 and the link attached to p2 has a mass m2. There is also some displacement as they are prismatic joints. So p1 can actually move linearly upwards and downwards and it will do so with displacement q1 while p2 can move from side to side with displacement q2. In addition there is an input force acting on each joint. So for the first joint you have an input force of f1 and for the second joint, we have an input force of F2. So the first step when solving this problem would be to find the position vectors of each of the two joints. And to do this, it would be helpful to have a coordinate axis or a coordinate system. So we can imagine this as our positive x-axis. And this direction would be our positive y-axis. Right. So first off, we will find the position vectors. Right, so the position vector of M1 can be represented as a 2 by 2 matrix. You have the x direction and the y direction. So if you look at link 1 or joint 1, it's on the zeroth part of the x axis. Therefore, it would have zero x movement. However, it can move linearly up and down, which is along the y-axis. Therefore, it can move by x q1, sorry, q1 along the y-axis. Similarly, we can also find the position vector for mass m2. It would already have a y displacement of q1 depending on how p1 moves. So therefore, the y component would be q1. And it can move side to side by displacement q2. So it would have x component of Q2. Right, the next step would be to differentiate the position vectors to find the velocity vectors. Right, so just to clarify, the velocity vector, we can call it Vm, would be equal to the differentiated version of Pm with respect to time. So with that in mind, we can have V M1, which would be 0 and Q1 dot. Similarly, V M2 would be Q2 dot and Q1 dot. This is because Q1 and Q2 are not constants and so they become differentiated when you are finding the velocity vector. So now we can calculate the kinetic energies and the potential energies of the system. Let's first have a look at the kinetic energy. Now the equation for finding the kinetic energy is half mv squared, but the velocity vectors have an x component and a y component. Therefore, we have to consider each component separately. So we would actually have the equation looking like half m, the x component, vx squared, plus half times mass times the y component squared. So this can be simplified to an equation such as half m vx squared plus vy squared. This would be the kinetic energy. Right. So with this in mind, we can now find our kinetic energies of the system. So I will use a different color. 
So let's say kinetic energy for M1 would be half times M1 times so Vx component would be zero so that's zero plus Vy would be Q1 dot so it would be half M Q1 dot squared. Similarly we can find the kinetic energy for mass M2 which would be half times M2 times the x component is Q2 dot so you would have Q2 dot squared plus the y component is Q1 dot Q1 dot squared right so the next step would be to find the potential energy of the system right so the potential energy would be mgh now keep in mind that h here is the height which means we only look at the vertical component right so the potential energy of mass m1 would be m1 g and the height or the vertical displacement would be q1 similarly the potential energy for mass m2 would be m2 g and the height of this would also be q1 as it only moves linearly uh, it only moves horizontally with displacement q2 but is at a height of q1 so it would be m2 g q1 right so now we have both our kinetic and potential energies for both our masses or both our links so now that we have the kinetic and potential energies we can calculate the Lagrangian which would be equal to the total kinetic energy minus total potential energy so for our system you would have kinetic energy of m1 plus the kinetic energy of m2 minus the potential energy of m1 minus the potential energy of m2 and if you substitute in the terms you would get this as your Lagrangian and if you factor out the masses of m1 and m2 you would get this as your final equation for the Lagrangian right so now that we have our Lagrangian equation we can find the torques and the forces but before we calculate the torques and forces we would have to find the individual components of that main equation so we would have to find the partial differentiation of the Lagrangian with respect to q1 dot q1 q2 dot and q2 so the final step would be to calculate the torques or forces now keep in mind that both our joints are prismatic therefore we would be finding two forces we can call them fm1 and fm2 the equation we would be using would be this equation so for example fm1 would be equal to the time derivative of darba l over darba q1 dot minus darba l over darba q1 minus any external input forces and torques we had an external input force which was f1 times q1 right similarly fm2 would be equal to d over dt partial differentiation of the Lagrangian with respect to q2 dot minus darba l over darba q2 minus the second input force which was f2 times q2 right so if you were to substitute in the values and solve for this you would get these two equations now i didn't solve this part over here you can actually leave your answer like this if you want but if you want to solve it for example this part over here the time derivative would simply be m2 q2 double dot and this q2 double dot would actually be the acceleration of that particular link
So this is your final answer. Alright guys, so that's all for this video. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed the video. If you guys like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Now if you have any questions or clarifications on the Grandian mechanics, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. Cheers and I'll see you all in the next video.